Okay, let's continue. We, I will discuss uh, the linearity of uh, systems in more formal definitions next meeting. Okay, now, but now here it is important. I want to emphasize the that uh, for uh, practicality's sake, as long as we can write uh, a set of uh, a relationship of a matrix against uh, two matrices can be defined by, uh, I mean, two vectors can be defined in terms of, uh, uh, can be the, their relationship can be defined in terms of a matrix. Then we can say that we can, those, uh, that expression is linear. So we say that Y is equal to MX plus B or Y in this case, B, uh, AX is equal to B or B is equal to AX can be considered as a linear set of equations, okay? So the independent variable X, which is composed of many components is multiplied by a matrix A in order to result into a vector B where a vector B can also be considered and be can have uh, several components, okay? So, uh, in this case here, our forward kinematics is not expressed that way. So this is not linear. And so we, we don't want to express it. We don't want to continue to do, it, to do this in order to solve for the inverse kinematics equation because it will be very, very difficult. So now we first linearize the system. Okay, now we linearize the partial of X is equal to Jacobian partial of Q. And so we say that it was a partial of X with respect to T. is equal to the partial of F with respect to T. Well, of course, your function F is dependent on the variable Q. And so we say partial of Q with respect to partial of T, okay? So now by chain rule, we have to do the partial of, of the independent variable Q. So now this is what we consider the Jacobian. And so we achieve already the linearity form that we are targeting at. In this case, you can remove, we can remove to be the, the, the independent variable T so that we can take the partial derivatives of Q with respect to I have partial derivative of Q and also partial derivative of X. So now in this case, this is a linear system. And so you have A sum matrix multiplied by a vector is equal to an output vector X, okay? So now, now it's easy. Now, once we achieve this, now it's easy now to get the inverse kinematics. So to do the inverse kinematics, what you want is the output Q. And so we just take the inverse of the Jacobian so that you transfer it to the other side, you take the inverse of this, inverse of the Jacobian, multiply it with the inverse of the Jacobian. Okay, uh, it's negative one, okay. Multiply this one with the inverse of the Jacobian. Okay, they will cancel. And so now you have partial of Q is equal to the inverse of the Jacobian times partial of X. So now in this sense, your input now is the X and you input, you output the Q, okay? So that's what we want, okay? From there, okay, from there we can specify. So in this form, we can now specify our controller because the partial of, in terms, in this case, the partial of X can be regarded as the, 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 the error of the desired value against the actual value of the X. So when you're familiar with uh, linear control systems in your previous class, where you have, we replace this uh, derivative in uh, uh, the partial of X as, as the, uh, the delta or the difference between the desired value and actual value multiplied by some gain. And so now if we do that, Okay, I don't know why it's going, what's going on. Okay, so in terms of the controller, let's just continue. 
Okay, so we already achieved the uh, the inverse kinematics. And so from the inverse kinematics, we replaced the partial derivative of X by our controller, where it is the error term of the desired versus the actual value multiplied by the gain. So once you do that, it becomes now your control uh, term multiplied by inverse of the Jacobian. Now you will know how much incremental movement is necessary for the joint to move so that you can achieve a zero value here. Once you, your desired value, your actual hand value, move the desired value, then these terms become zero, and then there will be no more joint values that you need to increment. Okay? But if there are still errors in the joint values, then this one is not zero, and so you, if you plug it to here, you add it to the current mm -hmm. joint value, this, then, then now this will be your new joint, and so on, until you continue mm -hmm. to increment this joint until the, this hand angle becomes zero. So visually, how do we do that? So we have already said that, for example, if your, if your robot hand moves here, and we want it to move here. And so there will be some incremental movement. So if this is your X desired, and this is your X actual, and so you say there's an error, okay? Okay, this is the error. So now to do that, this hand will move a little bit in that direction. And so it will have an incremental movement like that. And then this one, an incremental movement, an incremental movement, okay? So this movement of the joints, so the joint here will move incrementally to another joint, and this also move incrementally to that joint, okay? Delta of theta one or partial of theta one, or is it delta of theta one plus the delta of theta two in order to move here. So that small joint you add to the current value, then this will be the new value. So the total value will be that value and against this total value here, okay? So now you continue to do that until you reach here. So once you reach here, okay, once the desired value becomes the actual value, your robot reaches here, then the error will become very, very small. The error will become almost zero. And so this is almost zero. Then your delta Q will be almost zero. And so your joint angle will not move. Okay, so the idea is to get the error term between the actual and the desired values of your hand position, and then multiply it by the inverse of the Jacobian, and then you compute the incremental Q, and then you add that incremental Q to the current Q, and then the robot will move, okay, to the next joint value. Okay, now, so we are okay with that. There are questions there in terms of implementing the controller, okay? In this sense, the only thing that we didn't understand is how the Jacobian is computed. Okay, so I guess you have your uh, linear control systems and this is what it is, okay? And so now in terms of, uh, uh, you, you already have that background. And so there is just some error in order to move to the, to the new position, okay, of the output. Now, what we need to do here in the robotics is that we define what is this Jacobian so that we can take the inverse and multiply it by the control error, okay? So let's move on. So how is the Jacobian computed? Well, just like how we define it here, it is just the derivative of the J, okay. excuse me, it was not stated. I mean, I, I removed it. It was when you take the derivative of both sides, so that is the partial of Q with respect to T, okay, is equal to partial of F, 
of you to respect the team and partial of you to respect the team. Okay, no, sorry. Partial of you. By chain group. Okay. Okay. Now, how is this computed? Okay. What is this term? What is the value of the forward kinematics multiplied by the, I mean, it take the derivative with respect to Q. Okay. So we say that in terms of forward kinematics, you have, what is that? For example, X for the single derivative, I mean, the single joint, uh, the single link uh, robot, you have L cosine of theta, theta one, and Y, you have L one sine of theta one. Okay, if you take the partial of that F with respect to the independent, independent variable Q, and so take the partial of F, okay, with respect to, okay, with respect to theta one, okay, so this is L one, okay, what is this? cosine of theta, so that is minus sine of theta with respect to theta one. And so theta one with respect to theta one, that's one, okay? Partial of F of Q with respect to theta two. So you have L one cosine of theta one times one. Okay, so your Jacobian then for the joint, for the single axis, I mean one. One link robot, that's J. Okay, so we can expand it to two, to several joints. here so now in this case here partial of f1 okay you you have in this case along the along the, the row you have f1 okay f1 with respect to q1 q2 and qn okay f2 with respect to q1 q2 up to qn okay so let's concentrate in terms of the planar of the planar robot and so we say that q1 f1 F1 is equivalent to the X value and F2 is equivalent to the Y value. Okay, so now X with respect to Q1, X with respect to Q2, partial of X, X with respect to Q2, partial of X with respect to QN, okay? For us, in this case, let's concentrate on two values. Is there a result here of theta one and theta two? Okay, so let's go here so that it will be easier for you. So now if you have two joints here, so this is the forward kinematics. And so we say that this is all the equations that we have. This is your F of Q, okay? So now if we take the derivative of this X with respect to theta one and this X with respect to theta two, that's the second, this is the first term of the matrix, okay? If you see here, uh, I cannot annotate and move to the next second page now. I have to exit this too. Uh, okay. So we, I, I want to understand. I want you to understand that in, in this case, there is. Uh, a, a vector form of this forward kinematics, okay? 
this is a vector form. This is one component, this is a second component. Output is a vector form, X component and the Y component. Now, if you, if you take the derivative of this, because there are two independent variables, theta one and theta two, this first vector component X, partial of X with respect to one component theta one, that is the first term of this matrix now, because there are two independent variables, theta one and theta two. So the theta one, this is the theta one column, this is the theta two column. So now there are two columns here, and then the rows remains the same. So now that's the reason for it to become a matrix. Okay, so this vector, you take the partial with respect to the first independent variable theta one, and then the second independent for the first column and the second independent variable theta two. Okay, so now here, the same thing, we just repeat it with respect to the Y, which is the Y output, partial of Y with respect to the first independent variable theta one, partial of y with respect to first independent variable theta two. So how do we compute that? Well, we compute it like that. So, okay, let's just do it manually so that we can, all of us can do, do it. So now what is the x? Partial of x with respect to theta one. This is the x output, yeah? You take the derivative with respect to theta one. So using this first part, we say L1, okay? Then that is minus sine of, Theta one times one, okay, and plus is this theta one and theta two? Plus, I'm sorry. Let me just repeat it. This should be L1, okay. X with respect to theta one. And so you have L1, okay. The derivative of this is minus sine of theta one, okay. And what about this one? Plus, L2, okay. what is the derivative of this? Minus sine of theta one plus theta two, and then derivative of theta one, which is one. Okay, that's the first term. What is the second term with respect to theta two? There's something missing here. With respect to theta two, that is the first term. Now with respect to theta two, with respect to theta two, that is zero. Okay, that's zero plus, what is this now? L2 times minus sine, minus a sine of theta one plus theta two. Now with respect to theta two, that's a one. With respect to zero, theta one, that's zero, okay? So this is the first term and that is the second term. Okay, and then let, let's do this at the bottom. Okay. With respect to theta one, and so that is L1 cosine of theta one times one plus L2 cosine of theta one plus theta two times one plus zero because with respect to theta one only so this is theta one now that's it for the first term for the second term we take the derivative with respect to theta two so that is zero so zero <coughs> plus this term with respect to theta two that's l2 cosine of theta one plus theta two 
times zero plus theta one, zero plus theta one, I mean zero plus one, so that's one, okay? So now the, the correct form should be, there's something wrong here, sorry. Okay, it should be like that, okay? And this one should be added plus, and then plus, and then this one is repeated minus L2 sine of theta one plus theta two. Minus L2, I know, not minus. Just here, L2 cosine of theta one plus theta two. There you go. Okay, so yeah, there's something, there's some error here, I didn't, I think it is on the copy and pasting. Okay. So the, the correct, uh, the correct uh, Jacobian is this, where you take the derivative of this term with respect to theta one only. So this is with respect to theta one also. So this one should be, should be here, okay? With respect to theta one, this is also dependent on theta one, so it should be here. And so now with respect to theta two, that is repeated here. Okay, so this is the correct Jacobian. I will correct this one after this session. Okay, that's your Jacobian. Okay, this is in terms of two independent variables, theta one and theta two. So the question is, what will happen if your Jacobian, uh, you have three links? If you have three links, then you'll have a third component here. Let me not use the pink because plus L2, you have cosine of theta one plus theta two plus theta three. Okay, then here you have L2, I know, sorry, L2, L3, L3, sine of theta one plus theta two plus theta three. Okay, but again, this is just one vector. This is the X component and the second one is the Y component. So the X component with respect to theta one, which is the first column. So now if that is your, if you have three links, so now there is a third term here, minus L3 sine of theta one plus theta two plus theta three. So there will be a third component plus the negative, yeah? There will be a third component here, plus there will be a third component here, the same thing, plus sine of that one, and then the now a third column, which is just a repetition of the one, minus L3 sine of theta one plus theta two. You understand? Here plus theta three because there's a third variable. Here plus theta three. I oh, know this is just theta two because that's that part, and then that part, theta two three. Okay, here there is. Ah uh, oh, no, yeah, this is wrong. Should be here only. Only the theta three has the third part, so the theta three. So minus theta. I mean this is plus theta three cosine of theta one plus theta two plus theta three. Okay. 
Any questions? So the point here is that as long as you have written correctly your forward kinematics, then taking the derivative will be just like that. Taking one independent variable at a time, take the derivative of the first term x with respect to theta one, which is your first column, with respect to theta two, which is your second column, with respect to theta three, which will be the third column, and so on, depending on the number of joints. Okay. And so for the planar robot, it will be just repeating like this. It will always be like that. Planar robot that has that has uh, that has rotational joints. Any questions? Okay. If you don't have a question, let me continue. Now we'll, let's go to this part. So we have completed already the expression for the Jacobian. Okay. And now what we want to do is how to implement our controller. So to implement the controller, okay. These are the five steps that we need to do. Okay. So first, your input, you have to know what are the values of Q1 and Q2. Then you know the forward kinematics. Okay. We can do this for one link robot. And you can do this for two links robot. And you can do this for three link robot also. Okay. But first, let's do the just the forward kinematics for this, uh, for this, uh, uh, well, for this week's laboratory session. And then next week's laboratory session will be the inverse kinematics. But I want to discuss it now so that you won't have, a, uh, you will have an idea already of what will be your second, uh, I mean, the third uh, laboratory session. So now you have this uh, four kinematics, which we will do for this week. And then for the inverse kinematics, uh, just for computation, because you will be doing computation alone now, so hand computation instead of the inverse, you'll just take the, the transpose of the Jacobian. But you need to compute the Jacobian, multiply it by some gain. Gain normally just for our sake, it will be just 0.1 for the sake of this class. And then x desired and y desired. The x, x and y is computed from the previous forward kinematics. Okay, x and y is what you specify. And then from there, you can compute the delta Q. And then the delta Q, you add to the current Q. So you repeat until the error becomes small. Okay, that means X decide minus X and Y decide minus Y. You take the, the norm of that one. The norm of that one is just the error in terms of X squared plus the error in terms of Y squared, where the error in terms of X squared is the first part and the error of the y squared is the second one, okay? You take that error, and then you square it, you take that error and square it, and you add, and then you take the, uh, you take the square. Root. So now, so this is the, uh, okay, these are the specifications of each step, but here, this, uh, this is the, uh, the uh, overall instructions or overall algorithm where you take, several iterations from n is equal to one to max n. So that means that you will compute this, you repeat until your error is small or you, you already achieve the maximum number of iterations. So first part is you compute the forward kinematics. This is that forward kinematics, given certain value of Q and you compute the Jacobian and then you compute the DQ is this one, you compute the Jacobian, which we discussed already just the forward kinematics of Q with respect to each independent variable, with respect to partial of the independent variable Q. Now you compute the DQ and then update the, update the Q from here until then you compute this until the Q is small or your maximum N is rich maybe 1000 iterations and you still cannot find, you cannot move the robot, still cannot move to the desired location. Maybe it's too jumpy and then you just quit, okay? 
And so that's the discussion for the inverse kinematics of the uh, planar aroma. So let me run this uh, three and four so that you can have an idea of what's going on. We have 10 minutes. Let's go to okay. Okay, online. Okay, I'm here. So we upload robot three. Okay, robot three is uh, inverse kinematics of a planar robot. Okay, so now do you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so now uh, this is the the joint space. Yeah, this is the elbow angle, and this is the uh, world space where you see the hand position X, hand position X, and hand position Y. So you only have two joints. So, okay, let's uh, press to continue. Now you move to the next joint. Uh, I think uh, the, the desired hand position is zero and minus one. So the hand should go up to minus one X. And then X, oh, sorry, X is zero and uh, Y is minus one. So it will be somewhere here, zero. And so this hand will move to here, okay? So let's continue. So now, because I'm controlling this one, it does, this one is just as, as a result of the computation of that Delta Q based on the Jacobian, and so it will move, move, move. From here, it will continue to move as uh, and when you are close already to the, uh, it will go here. When you move, when you're moving closer to the correct value, then it will move slowly and slowly until Okay, so now it reaches there. It reaches to this, it should stop now. Okay, I think it's still the error is still not that small. So it keeps continue to. Okay, anyway, so now from here, from the initial configuration of the robot, it moves to here because this is the desired value. And the Jacobian will automatically compute what will be the necessary angle so that the hand can move closer and closer to there. So now you just imagine yourself that you're doing it in terms of forward kinematics. This movement of the joint angles will, in order for you to imagine where the hand will be, will be difficult to know, okay? So maybe you can, maybe by machine learning, maybe you can do that, but by, by purely mathematical uh, computation, for you to be able to know that the, the hand of the robot has to move in that direction, then maybe you won't have that smooth, uh, is that uh, not a smooth uh, computation, but maybe just random movement until it, it will reach there. But here, because of the Jacobian, then there's a smooth transition from the initial point going towards the final configuration. In terms of the joint space, these are the joints of joint one and Theta one and theta two. Okay, this is theta one from zero from one hundred to minus around minus ninety. So and then theta two is from minus one hundred to around zero value. Okay, so that is the computation of the of the delta increment, the delta Q based on the Jacobian computation, and from there the hand can move towards that desired location. Okay. So now let me do the second one where you have a, a, a robot. I don't want to say redundant, but say a, a robot that has four links, I mean, three links and moving in the same space. Uh, 
Now, okay, this is a problem. So we say, uh, okay. Okay, then upload four. Okay, and then robot four. Okay, in this case here, the robot were one, two, three, three joints. Okay, so let's just repeat the process because we're running out of time. Now, you see the, and then you still need, it still needs to go here. But in this case here, I'm just showing the joint space of the, in terms of theta one and theta two. There should be a theta three, which I skip here because I don't want to show three dimensional uh, graph. I would just want to show two dimensional graph or two dimensional display there. So the link, no matter the link, you know, it will adjust no matter how, what kind of configuration the link has, as long as the hand moves from there towards here, then that means we're still able to successfully command that robot, no matter if it has three links or two links, the hand will move to that desired value. Okay, and you have three minutes remaining. Okay, that is the idea. Okay, so you can see the difference in these two links. Okay, let's just show side by side. That is the two link and this is. Link and this is the three link robot. I cannot. I wish I okay, never mind. Just do like this. Okay, as you can see, okay, the movement is still similar. The hand moves from here to downwards, the hand moves from here to downwards, but this is just two link robot display. And then this is a three link robot display. And you can see that, you know, in this case, the, the links are in a different configuration because of course there are three of them. And then the two links, there's different configuration, but the hand movement does not matter. The hand still moves from this initial location to the desired location for the three link, and the initial location to the desired location for the two link. Okay. That's it. Any question? Okay. It will be very hard to see now because you, you don't do it yourself, but once you do it in the lab manually, as well as you know, in, in the uh, math lab exercise, then you can see what's going on. I guess there are no questions. Yeah. And so let's have the lab exercise uh, next meeting. And I will really encourage you to go to the physics lab, our e, uh, TA, where is she? Camilla, yes. She, please go to a physics lab. She will be there waiting for you. Okay. And just go and wear your mask. So that you can, you know, use the, so that Camila can there and answer you questions, and you can also, if you can want to ask me questions, I can also answer those questions. But Camila will be there, and then so that you can have a computer to use. Okay, it's important that you do the manual computation as well as the lab programming in MATLAB. It's very simple MATLAB programming, so you don't need to worry about. It. Okay, okay, no questions. If no questions, then uh, we'll see you on Thursday, lab exercise at 2 p.m. Okay, thank you. Okay. See you, bye. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.